Nurses are the largest group of health professionals in this country. But as the largest group of health providers, they had the very least to say about health care policies. I see nurses being far more concerned about the prevention of illness instead of the treatment of the illness. And I think if we're really going to solve the problems of the health care delivery system in this country, we've got to put the emphasis on prevention. And that's what nursing service is all about. See, just very often you can use your hand with a baby, again, touching the baby. Now, isn't that fun? <laughs> if there's a, a man and a woman in the home, now, I am now working in community nursing, having health teaching seminars, getting feedback from them on what their nursing needs are. So I was so worried because I got two, and if I got pregnant, not, nobody's working. Mm -hmm. You see, the public right now is begging for nursing care, not to medical care. More medical care and disease-oriented care will not help the public. Nursing focuses far more on health teaching, <laughs> teaching you to care for yourself. What hurts is going through the skin, not going into the vein. So it's better if you go through the skin kind of quickly. You'll feel a give as you go into the vein, okay? And the first thing you do when you get into the vein, um, what will happen is blood will come back into the tubing here, okay? Then you release the tourniquet, okay? We used to sit in the waiting room for one time. It was two hours before we could get the medicine because I have hemophilia and I need to have certain medication to stop the bleeding. When the bleeding goes into the joint, it wears away the bone, and if it keeps on going, I'll be crippled. But now that I can give it right away, I can stop it right away, so I'll have a better chance of not being crippled. Now feel it so you know what you're going for. Now which way are you going to go? Okay, you don't ever go that way. You always go this way towards your heart from wherever you are. Okay, that's what make it, might make it a little difficult here as opposed to here. Okay, you still want, you want to go there. It's fine, you'll be able to do it. Yeah, I'll still go there. Can you see where you're going because of the shadow of your hand? Yeah. Okay. Keep going a little steeper. Oh, fantastic! Okay, now, that's right, take that and put that down right there. Very good! Fantastic! That's just great. You're going to have no problem. That is really good. People with chronic diseases, right, require little curing. They really don't need that because you can't cure them. We can't cure cancer today, we can't cure diabetes, and we can't cure heart disease. But what can you do with them? You can maintain their high level of health, which is preserving their wellness. So I would say that it could be a safe assumption today that young nurses are looking for more than to just care for the sick, but are really looking to make a significant contribution in the health care system. When all of us graduated, we really expected that we were going to have control over our work to a certain extent. And basically, we all found that we were just running around like crazy people, unable to control anything, any part of our job. And then combined with the sort of, you know, malarkey we'd gotten in school about, you know, total patient care and being involved with the patient and looking at every aspect of the patient. And, you know, you were damn lucky if you could get their bath done that day and you know if you worked on a weekend you you know you knew someone was getting a urinary infection sitting in that bed of shit but you just had to get your pills out to everybody because you know people need their digoxin it was like setting up such priorities that you really felt like you know you were barely being a human being let alone a, a nurse to me a professional is somebody who basically controls the way they perform their job i think about doctors and lawyers as being professionals and I don't feel that nurses have any control over their job. Um, we don't control patient care.
we don't control the amount of staffing we don't control anything about who gets admitted to the hospital who we take care of how we take care of them we are a group of fifteen or so RNs and LPNs who work at many different hospitals around the area we got together about two years ago when some of us had just started working as new graduates working in the hospital really pits nurses against the patients because we don't have enough staff we don't have enough time we start seeing each patient's needs as an intrusion upon our already crowded work day. The patients are pretty powerless, so a lot of times, you know, you think, well, gee, this patient is making a reasonable demand, but it's going to upset a lot of red tape, and I know they're right, but I can't satisfy their needs because, after all, who, who sent me my paycheck? It's the hospital. One of the problems is that we just... We only see, see that the only solution is to get out ourselves, you know, to get a better job for ourselves, to get into an easy floor, or to go back to school, or to go out into the community, you know, just this mecca to a hospital nurse. And, and I kind of like working in a hospital. It would be nice if I could see a change, you know, and if I wouldn't have to leave after three years because I was so fed up. The turnover rates. Uh in the field of nursing, nurses leaving hospitals because they're frustrated is probably about 60 to 70 percent. Nurses, as we know, are striking throughout the country. They cannot get the conditions in which they can actually practice. I've never worked with a contract where decent working conditions were set down or where my rights were established that if I wanted to have input into change, there was a mechanism. I sent in our first list of the kinds of proposed changes we wanted, June 13th, 1973, yeah. which was a whole year before we even went on strike. And more than a year. Doesn't and more that, because that, that's that what actually showed. started about eight years before, in 1966. You were the only one in the group, Joyce, who was, you know, in this group, who was there. Right. The most, uh, I think, impressive thing in my memory about 1966 was walking down the hall one morning at 7 o'clock to hand in some hundred uh, RN nurse resignations. So people were willing to throw their whole job away in order to get hospital administrators just to talk with them. They wouldn't speak to us about anything. I mean, I, I was just starting nursing school in 66, but I, w I was talking to the nurses, and I was in Nebraska then. I heard about those crazy nurses in California, and I'm going, I don't know if I could ever get involved in a strike. Because what about the patients? I mean, there are those poor people there that we are dedicated to take care of them, you know. Never in my wildest dreams, number one, did I ever imagine I'd ever be in California, and number two, that I'd ever participate in, in anything so outrageous as a nurse's strike. In 74, I was one of the crazy nurses. The administrators who do the staffing at the hospitals, you probably know this, they have a staffing coordinator who I don't think has been on one of the patient wards ever in his or her existence. At our hospital, the director of nurses hadn't been on the wards up until the time of the strike. And they don't know what's happening. So you have these administrators sitting in offices making very business management kind of decisions, which are basically life and death decisions for the patients. And for us, it's a matter of, you know, working under really miserable conditions and not being able to give people what they need. And it's extremely depressing as well as scary. Um, very frustrating, exhausting. You know, there's not enough nurses to do what should be done for people who are in those hospitals. First of all, you're a professional nurse, so you can't be an employee. Then you realize, well, I have to be an employee to have some security so I can act as a professional nurse. Otherwise, I can't stand up and say, look, we need three more of me here to do the job that needs to be done. In March of 75, at convention, that was the first time that there was rational discussion about nurses participating in collective bargaining at a strike and all of those other dirty things that nurses don't do. And there are still nurses that don't believe that we should have been involved in any way in what we did. Show her and this is what she say. Oh, you can't scare me. I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. I'm sticking to the union. Oh, you can't scare me. 
My name is Linda Vandercook. I'm on the negotiating committee. And, you know, I was told to call because uh, you were having some problems and some questions or some doubts that was causing you to think about going back to work. You know, and I was wondering if I could help you because I know it's been very difficult these last five weeks. We've all been under a lot of pressure and everything, and, you know, we're having a lot of financial problems. I know myself, I have two children, you know, and I have to support them myself. Yeah, you know, and I know it's difficult, and I know the holidays are coming, you know, but I'd rather work seven weeks of, you know, hardship staying out than the rest of my life working without a contract. Because once you have no contract, you have no protection. Henry, Henry call. What does Henry say? I joined the strike because it was very clear that the hospital governing commission were trying to destroy the union. And it got to be real apparent that the only way to stop that was to make a real strong stand. I think it became very clear in this strike that nurses were together. In fact, they were so much together that from week one until week five, there was barely a trickle of nurses who went back in the hospital. They're so beginning to understand very clearly that as administrative bureaucracy gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that patient care is left at the bottom of the list and that nursing is left at the bottom of the list. We're now a corporation instead of a hospital. And as a corporation, we nurses and doctors as workers have to begin to think that way, that we have to be able to make demands on the corporation and have those demands met. Today, people understand that it's nice to be an angel of mercy, but if you have a family to feed, it's also nice to be able to feed your family. So you make a clear choice, and the choice is to be able to do good nursing care for the time that you're there, and then just make a decent salary and have decent benefits so that you can go home and also take care of your family and take care of yourself. Right now, nurses are still trying to get over this whole professionalism thing of, you know, is it professional to be on strike? Is it professional to ask for our rights? To get over that and to reach a point where we see ourselves simply as workers in the hospital takes a lot of education. Nurses are organizing because they're coming to realize that the reality of working, you know, is not that good, that we really are workers and we put up with horrendous conditions and things like that. So I think what we're seeing now is really an attempt to buy nurses up by kind of the lure of upward mobility. Some few some small number of nurses can get BS degrees, and those will be the ones who become head nurses. Or if it becomes too bad, you can go to a nurse practitioner program. And it's like putting this thing up here that we can become, so that as long as we see that maybe there's a chance that I can get out of nursing, you know, I can become a nurse practitioner and, and go around and make home visits or do this or do that, you know, then I'll put up for, with this stuff in the hospital long enough till I can get the next degree. Medicine has simply viewed nursing as the lower, menial half of medicine. Doctors have always tried to involve nurses in medical functions, functions that they want to discard. Okay, say uh, uh. Ah. Uh. Have you ever had any discharge from your ears? No. Okay, if you'll take some deep breaths through your mouth, okay? Out. As I've mentioned to you before, to communicate your certainty about mm -hmm. what you found in the patient, you have to persuade, in a sense, the person that's listening, that you really know your stuff. If you're not certain, be sure that you're not certain and say so in a very certain okay. fashion. Okay, physical exam. The chest was symmetrical. It was resonant to percussion in all fields. The breath sounds were normal. I think when you do not have a proper image of yourself as somebody who's giving a service, then you're going to attach yourself to a group that does. The nurses are spending an extended amount of time learning to do physical exams, physical diagnosis. And who is this data for? It's for the physician, and I say that's fine. If the physician needs help, let him go train assistants. And if these nurses want to identify with physicians, then let them go get licensed as physician's assistants and get out of nursing and leave us in nursing alone to do nursing. Because they're distorting our image, they're uh, eroding the whole autonomy of their profession, there's a lot of federal and public uh, money being poured into these programs, 
and it is robbing the citizen and the public of needed nursing care and all who's reaping the benefit is the physician a physician with a nurse pediatric associate who's doing this kind of thing can increase his income from fifty thousand a year to a hundred thousand a year and pay her twenty Medical care is not health care. Medical care is classically illness oriented because of the definition of the practice of medicine, which is the diagnosis and treatment of pathology. And in fact, there's no money in health care. The money in the whole industrial complex is in illness care. Pharmaceuticals, supplies, hospitals, insurance, the whole business. We thought that the public should have access to nursing service when and where they want it. And we started a private practice in Stuyvesant Town, Peter Cooper area of New York. We see our own patients for nursing, and we see them in their home. Hi, Rose. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm glad to see you. In nursing, we're dealing with a whole patient the whole client, the whole individual, in terms of their family, themselves, their environment. We're looking to see how we can help somebody make their life better. How is your week? My week? Yeah. I don't have any belts. I lost my belts, and I, I can't move around the way I used to. You're not moving as well as you were when no. I saw you before, Rose? No, no, I'm not. Of course, I go in there and get my breakfast, but uh, I'm a little bit scared, you know. I'm, I'm shaky. I'm afraid I'm going to fall. When she, and it's particularly at, uh, well, it's usually at, at, in the evening. Do you have that trouble when I'm not here? No. Well, then I was wondering whether it's me. It's is it better in the morning, Rose? Or? Uh, yes, it is. In the evening, is it worse? My right leg seems to be. For years, nurses through the visiting nurse associations, public health nurses, frontier nurses have been providing care for people in their homes. Third party payment, in other words, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, these kinds of things will not pay for nursing care in the home unless the patient's physician has authorized it. Why should you have to go pay a doctor $40 to get him to authorize that you have nursing care? In other words, they're two separate professions. I don't know what I'd do without you. You're a good woman, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I am. See, the legislation in Congress determines where nurses work, how much they'll get paid, and what they'll do. The legislation has been written very, very specifically by a physician-oriented Congress. The health care delivery system in this country is chaotic. It's not delivering health care services. People are outraged because they lack access and because it costs too much. I don't think we're ever going to have a health care system in this country until the public starts realizing where it's at and monitors it very carefully and takes the control or the system out of the hands of one dominating profession called medicine and out of the hands of groups like the American Hospital Association. Because who sits on the boards that play things like Blue Cross and Blue Shield? Physicians and hospital administrators. And who monitors whether the hospital is in fact working within a cost system. The very people that are running the institutions are doing the monitoring and that's really, that's kind of fun. In the next decade, nurses will need political skills just as surely as they need clinical and teaching skills. You will see far more struggle by nurses like there have been in Illinois in that strike, saying we demand not only a decent wage, but good patient care. That's what the San Francisco strike was all about, too. And I think you'll see nurses taking a far more aggressive role. Thank you for coming up today okay. for lunch hour. We have to get together with other people who 
share the same lousy working conditions and are interested in better health care. And that's the other people who work in the hospital and the patients. Together, we might be strong enough to make some of the changes that we need.